Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't want to make this video. I'm loving Infinite mostly so much. I'm having so much fun with the game. I don't want to sit here making negative videos, complaining about stuff, but frankly, this is something that needs to be done. Halo Infinite's microtransactions are absolutely awful, are worse than any of us could have probably ever imagined, and they need to change. They need to change. 343, Halo Infinite, I'm gonna say it right now, for me at least, is the best Halo game since Halo 3, right? This is my favorite Halo game of the last 14 years. You've made a truly, truly fantastic game here. Multiplayer is fantastic. The maps, the modes, the gameplay, fantastic. The campaign is just unbelievably good. Please do not kill this game with an awful monetization system after you've nailed every single other facet of it. The reason that I feel so strongly about this is because I love this game so much. Like, I didn't like Halo 5 that much, so as much as I didn't like the rec system in that game, I didn't feel anywhere near as bad about it as I do with infinite monetization because I actually love this game and I think that it has a real shot at being something truly special. But right now, this monetization system is just, it's just hampering it so much. So let's get into what's wrong with it. The armor in this game, the art style for the Spartan armor is unbelievably good but I can't appreciate any of it because of the terrible system behind it. I honestly really feel for the artists and developers who worked on all of this armor because they clearly put so much love and effort into these pieces of armor, the new ones and the returning ones. And all they're probably seeing right now is everybody raging about how they're unlocked through paying for them over actually fawning over how good they look. I mean, for example, one of the first helmets you get, if you don't buy the battle pass, right? If you just play the game, I mean, obviously it's free to play the game, but if you don't buy the battle pass, you don't get a helmet until tier 81. And with the current leveling system, that's gonna take months at this point, literally months. The idea of locking stuff like this behind a paywall is so bad because when I get into a game, for example, and I see somebody with like Emil's armor and the flaming helmet, I don't look at that and think, oh, that looks so sick. Oh, I can't believe, I can't believe he's got that. I wonder how he unlocked flaming helmet. I wonder how he got Reach's armor. No, 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 no. What I do is I look at that and I go, oh, you spent $200 in the battle pass. There's nothing, there's no cool factor to it anymore. And I'm not going to lie, I can't help but think that the reason that this game doesn't have a traditional level-based progression system like every Halo since Halo 3 is because they want the only progression system, the Battle Pass, to be monetized and they can't do that with a standard progression system. A traditional progression system with armor rewards for hitting certain levels would just divert your attention away from paying for tier skips in the slow battle pass. For myself, and I know many others as well, customizing your Spartan, leveling up through the ranks and unlocking a piece of armor that you think looks really cool, or going after a certain achievement or challenge to get a piece of armor that you think would really suit your character well, was such a huge part of not just Halo's multiplayer experience, but the Halo experience as a whole. It really felt like you were crafting your Spartan to look exactly how you wanted. Some people even create characters about their Spartan, and having that and being able to show that off in-game was such a huge part of multiplayer. And now, anybody who was like that, who appreciated that part of Halo, has just been completely shunned in Infinite. Unlike every other game that was previously paid for but has recently gone free to play, Halo has a long-standing legacy of armor customization and unlocks and progression that dates back as far as Halo 3. That's been a core part of the franchise now for 14 years, and the fact that this was completely glossed over when making the game free to play it's just so incredibly sad. This is why people always say that microtransactions being cosmetic only isn't the be all end all when it comes to Halo. It might be for Call of Duty, it might be for other franchises, but for Halo, where customizing your character has been a thing, a main part of the multiplayer for literally a decade and a half, you can't just gloss over that. And when you do, you get a system that is as awful as Halo Infinite is. I'm seeing a few people saying as well, like, oh, you don't need to unlock everything. That might be the case for Call of Duty or Fortnite or other games. That's not the case for Halo. I mean, Halo has bred so many of us to be completionists when it comes to armor in particular. I mean, you were quite literally rewarded for getting all the armor in Halo 3. You got a katana for it. So this argument, like, yeah, might work with other games. It doesn't work with a franchise that has Halo's legacy. And then as well, I'm also seeing some people saying other games are doing it, so it's okay. No, <laughs> don't let big games normalize shitty practices like this and 
please stop accepting mediocrity. Something else I realized the other day that is really sad is that one of my favorite videos to make are the Spartan armor lore videos. I love going into custom games and creating like custom characters with armor sets and building up like little backstories for them. So for example, say I do like Emil's armor in Reach, I'll give him a shotgun and I'll pose him in cool parts of the map and stuff and then go into theater and get cool like cinematic shots of him and stuff. I can't do that anymore because I'm going to have to buy all of the armor to do that. And I've seen some people saying like, oh, you can just buy the armor and write it off your taxes. Can I do that? Yes. Am I going to do that? No, because that's just going to encourage a system like this and make it unfair for people that can't afford to buy these armors that they really want. I dread to think how much money I would have to spend to make, for example, the Reach armor law video that I made years ago in Halo Reach in Halo Infinite. In fact, more on that in a minute because I actually might have a rough figure for how much I would actually have to spend. All I've bought so far in this game are a few of the eSports skins and the regular battle pass. I've not paid for any tier skips, I didn't get the premium pass or anything. Esports skins I think are fine because they're never, they would never be part of like a regular progression system, right? Like they are totally external to a progression and unlock system. Um, but I, I will not be giving them any money through the store. I will not be buying a single bundle. I don't care if they bring back Hayabusa and put it in the store. I won't pay for it. I just, I won't do it. I'm not going to encourage a system like this. Oh yeah, also, do you remember when they said no FOMO, no fear of missing out on Halo Infinite? Um, well, the store has big text that says store refreshes at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, which means that when that store refreshes, all those armors are going to vanish from the store and there is a chance, maybe they won't do, but there is a chance that those armors could never return. So if you don't buy them by 10 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday, well, maybe you'll never get them again. I know that's happened with Fortnite skins before where they've just vanished for years, Who's to say that won't happen with Halo Infinite? So the Battle Pass might not have any FOMO, but the store sure as hell does. Another awful feature as well, as we all expected over a year ago now, armor coatings. When they said that they were going to give us more choice, I think everyone knew that wasn't the case. And here we are, it's not the case at all. Yes, the coatings themselves do look fantastic, I'm not going to lie. I love how the coatings themselves actually look, but the systems behind them are genuinely worse than we thought they were going to be. I mean, for example, coatings aren't even cross-core compatible. So if you buy a green coating, for example, for the Mark 7 core, you can't wear that on your Reach armor. That is locked to Mark 7. And then some of the coatings in the Battle Pass as well are just ridiculous. Like, so dumb. I mean, for example, if you want to get the... Oh my god. If you want to get the color purple, well, tier 41. If you want to get the color gray with a little bit of blue for Mark V, tier 99, because that's Noble Six's color, so it's got to be ranked high. Tier 99 for the color gray and a little bit of blue. Come on. Yeah. You know, it really makes you wonder if the reason the Battle Pass progression is so painfully slow in this game is to encourage people to just pay to skip to get what they want. I mean... Would that really surprise anyone? It wouldn't surprise me. Okay, I actually just opened the game up just to do a little bit of quick math to see right now how much I would have to spend to get the grey with the bit of blue armor coating. Bear in mind this is just for Mark V, right? I can't put that on my Mark VII core or my Yoroi core. That is just for Mark V, so keep that in mind whilst I do these little, little calculations, right? So, I'm currently tier 10 in the Battle Pass, so if I wanted to get the colour grey with a little bit of blue, I would either have to grind the game like it's a full-time job to get all the way to tier 99, or, conveniently, I can spend 17,800 credits, which is equal to 142 pounds and 38 pence, However, it's even worse because I can't buy 17,800 credits. Because of course, conveniently, you can't buy the precise amount of credits that you need to buy a certain thing. You have to buy more. Of course you can't. Sorry, I'm just adding to this video the Tenrai Fractures update whatever just came out with a Yorui armor core. And it appears as if the simple color of red and blue for the Yorui core, it's not unlockable in the battle pass. It's just locked and it says stay tuned for more details. I'm trying to be glass half full here, right? But if they end up putting the color blue and red, the simple coatings that are even free for Mark 7 and Mark 5 in the store behind a paywall, then I've lost all hope for this game. I really have done. If they end up doing that with these, I really, really hope that they don't. I hope that I'm just overthinking this, but they're locked and they're not in the Tenrai Battle Pass. So, uh, I don't know. 
And then you've got these bundles as well. I mean, some of them have just been insane. I mean, this one, for example, the Zvezda armor that we were all wearing in the flights, right? That I think a lot of people actually really liked. Only way to get that is by buying the $20 bundle and also in the bundle is the bleach bone armor coating and right now this coating is the only way to wear white armor in the game of course it's just for mark 7 if you buy this you can't get it for mark 5 it's just for mark 7 it is the only way to get white armor in the game and the only way to get this coating is by spending $20 on the Zvedsta armor bundle. There is no other way to get this coating. You have to buy the entire bundle for $20. Even if you don't want any of the armor, you just want the coating, you still have to buy the bundle. Sorry, I'm failing to see how any of this is player first. We were told that they were approaching the coating system from a player first mentality. The coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. We're coming at this from a player first mentality. And I fail just totally to see how locking a color, a basic color, in a $20 armor pack is even remotely, remotely player first. The armor cores in particular, I'm convinced, exist for no other reason than to force you to buy duplicate microtransactions. The fact that a coating only works with one armor core. And also, you buy a coating and it's not like you have the coating for the armor and the weapon and the vehicle. You have to get all of them individually as well, so it's just even more padding out the loot pool. It's insane. And then this idea that cross-core compatibility isn't possible has just been completely proven false by the fact that the bots in bot games are wearing cross armor core armor. They're mix and matching like Yoroi, Mark 7 and Mark 5. Why can the bots do that and we can't? It's... It's insane. It's utterly insane. Just before I was about to record this video, I saw a post on Reddit by Samurai1226 about a shop bundle leak. Now, bear in mind this is a leak, so do take it with a grain of salt. This might not be totally accurate, right? But this leak talks about 88 shop bundles that are supposed to be coming to the shop, I don't know, probably in, by the end of season one or something, I assume. Um, but it appears that, I'm sure you guys have noticed actually, in the battle pass and also in customization, a lot of the reach armors appear to be conveniently missing. They don't appear to be there. For example, pilot's not there, right? Well, that's all coming in shop bundles, according to this leak. Uh, there are going to be 88 bundles totaling, and uh, brace yourself for this, you might want to sit down for this one, $1,035 to unlock all of this stuff. Obviously, it's not just reach stuff, there's going to be other stuff as well, but one a thousand dollars I'm just, I'm lost for words. And what's worse is that if this is to be believed, then they've also locked the standalone versions of Emil and Carter's shoulders to bundles. And thus, they're locked behind paywalls. And so, this means that the only way to wear these shoulders, that of course in Reach and MCC you get just via gameplay, that are core to the whole Reach customization thing, is by A, unlocking these characters completely locked down, totally uncustomizable kits, which come from the battle pass, or if you want to actually customize your own Spartan with these pieces of armor that you probably wore back in Reach and probably wear in MCC right now, then the only way to do that by this leak is by buying them from a bundle with real life money. I get that this game is free to play, right? And that money needs to be made somehow. But not allowing players to unlock so much of this stuff through gameplay, despite saying before launch that there's so much that you can unlock on day one through gameplay, right? They said that in one of the trailers before launch. It's just so, so wrong. I mean, I seriously, seriously hope that people that pay $60 for the campaign actually get something of worth in the multiplayer for it. Because if they don't, then I... I don't know, this monetization is just egregious. So let's talk about a solution. Um, besides, of course, adding an actual progression system with level-based unlocks, uh, I think that adding classic Reach style credits to the game that you can spend in the store and that you earn via playing, winning, completing challenges, getting achievements, getting medals, playing the objective, etc. would be a start. I think that would be a great start to fixing this system because at least that would allow us to unlock this stuff via gameplay. Of course, you could still pay for it with real life money, but 
At the very least, there would then be an option for us to earn it via gameplay. It would also allow us to actually buy the battle pass, like in Warzone and Fortnite, by playing the game. As long as we finish the, the battle pass or whatever, we'd be able to get enough credits to buy the battle pass next season. That currently isn't possible in Infinite. There are no credit rewards in the battle pass. There's just a load of challenge skips and small XP boosts or whatever. So it would allow us to do that as well. Um, but that, that's what I do for now. It's far from ideal, right? But at least then there's a path to unlocking this stuff in-game via gameplay. Don't don't pay for tier skips and don't buy these bundles. They are egregiously overpriced. I mean, I saw one yesterday, right? It was $10 for two knives. $10? Are you joking me? <sighs> Insanity. The reason that I'm so just frustrated by this is because, like I said at the start, I love this game. This game has some real fucking potential. I genuinely think that this game is, well, I, I, I'm adamant this game is the best Halo since Halo 3. I'm having so much more fun with this game than Reach, Halo 4, Halo 5, and everyone else seems to be thinking the same thing as well. It's almost a unanimous agreement that the game is, broadly speaking, fantastic. Yes, there's like very few playlists, few modes, there's not enough content in multiplayer, but what's there is great, right? Campaign is fantastic. You've, you've done such a good job with this game. So many of us are loving it. It's off to a fantastic start, but please don't hinder it with this stuff. Please, 343, I'm begging you, do not damage this game with awful monetization practices like this. And I guarantee, if you made a fairer system, you would make more money because people would be, more, I would be more inclined. If this is a fairer system, I would be more inclined to spend money on it. As it stands right now, I'm not giving it a penny. I'm not going to feed a system like this, but if it was fairer, I'd be like, eh, you know what, this coating, yeah, I'll buy that. I don't really like the system behind coatings, but if it was fair, I'd be like, you know what, I'll encourage a system, because at least it's not as bad as it could be. But right now, nah, not spending a penny, not spending a penny. So yeah, that's all I want to say for this one, guys. I'm going to round it out here, because I don't really want to spend too long talking about this, because like I said, I don't like making negative videos. I love this game, and I want to go play it and enjoy it and make hype videos, but I had to make this video. So um. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and I'll catch you all in the next one.